Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Cass. Uh, I, I will have my self introduction later. But uh, initially, uh, today, for today, it, we also expected to have another host, Shimoda san, the Norihiro Shimoda san. He is a customer engineer working at Google. And he is the founder for TensorFlow User Group, but he couldn't make it because his personal uh, issue has happened. So for today, I will try to cover his topics as possible because I have been work, working closely uh, with him to grow, initiate, and grow the TensorFlow User Community as well. And as a second topic, I will talk about how I supported the growth of the BigQuery uh, community in Japan from scratch. So. He's not here today. He's a customer engineer, and he was actually was um, engineer at BrainPath Corporation. Uh, has been working as a the uh, uh, with Google for uh, for uh, some years, and I have been working at Google over seven years, based in Tokyo. And uh, for the last four years, I have been working as a developer advocate at Google uh, Google Cloud team, focusing on the data and analytics team. Uh, analytics and analytics products such as TensorFlow, which is the machine learning uh, tool for the, uh, the deep learning and the neural network, and also the BigQuery, which is the data warehouse service from Google Cloud. And also, I have been working at Google uh, at, uh, at Tokyo office, but uh, I can we, I use, usually go around many different countries. Last year, I went to 15 countries and had 120. Meetups and events uh, in a year. Yeah, countries including the EU countries uh, or the uh, countries uh, the US or the APA countries. And these are my past works for blogging and uh, creating demos in three years. Uh, so I have been writing many GCP official blog posts or the uh, creating demonstration for, for Google I/O or Google Cloud Next event uh, to, to feature the power of the machine learning. So some of may you may have heard about the uh, cucumber farmer story. Uh, there's a cucumber farmer in Shizuoka Prefecture who has been using the TensorFlow, the deep learning tool, to build his own cucumber solder uh, with Raspberry Pi. That was featured by the New York Magazine and also Newsweek Magazine. And also, this is uh, the demonstration I've created to demonstrate the very simple machine learning algorithms that is called rock, paper, scissors machine. That is shared by Eric Schmidt. And also Jeff Dean uh, featured my the ramen classification story. <laughs> so that's my work. And uh, as a first topic, I will try to cover the, the Shimoda science topic, which is how he grown the TensorFlow user community in Japan from scratch. And what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow is an open source tool for building your own machine learning application. And actually, this is an, the standard tool we are using inside Google for building any new machine learning or AI systems. And we have open sourced it in 2015. And so if you go to tensorflow.org, anybody can download it and try it by yourself. And this is the growth. Actually, this is pretty old graph. And now the GitHub star count is over 100,000 stars. So it's the most popular deep learning framework in the world. And TensorFlow user group is the Japanese user group founded in 2016 by uh, Shimoda-san. And an interesting part of the TFUG is that it's not only focusing on the academic research or a state of the art technology of the TensorFlow, but also it features the how people or enterprises or individuals are using the TensorFlow in real world uh, with real world problems. So, for example, at TFUG, uh, the many real world uh, use cases in enterprises such as the AXA case, uh, Semitomo Mitsui Financial Group case, or OCNET or QP cases are featured in the TFUG. And now they have about over 3,500, almost 3,600 members on Compass as a registered users. And every time they have a meetup, monthly meetup, usually at Google Office, uh, then they usually have over like 200 registration, where we only have 150 seats in at Google Office. 
So 3,600 3, members, many page views, unique users, applicants over 350. So it's booming. And actually, I've never read this slide, so I have to try it, <laughs> read it. Read it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Small core group for the first. Ah, yes, I remember that. So initially, uh, I have been supporting the Shimoda-san and other core people to initiate the, uh, the community from scratch. And for the first time, we didn't had any uh, big events or meetups. Instead, we had a very small cross, kind of cross meetup uh, as the initial step, so that we were able to uh, build a very strong core uh, community for the larger community TFUG. And also it was very successful to define the uh, logo of the uh, community at the first, for the, from the first time so that uh, there were the, at the other branches, uh, there are some branches in, of the TFUG in Japan, they were able to reuse the logo to customize their own logo for each the, uh, region in Japan. Community design, who is interested in community? I, I don't know how does it mean. <laughs> so, yeah, because this is not much right. I try to cover his topic. <laughs> Introduction, secret, ah yes, so I remember that. Initially we created a Facebook group, private Facebook group uh, for the, uh, with the very core of the people, with the real deep learning researchers or real enterprise users for deep learning. And also had a small meetups. And the first meetup was happened in the October 2016. And as a Googler, I have been supporting uh, the TFUG from the start. And uh, in the developer relations teams, I was always trying to uh, secure some budget for supporting the third party communities. Usually, historically, Google has been trying to create their own company-owned community, such as the Google Developer Group or Google Developer Eng uh, Experts. But instead, I was, has been discussing with the uh, global team that it's really important to support the third-party community, even though they, you know, they are not controlled by the Google or they sometimes may be talking about AWS or any other vendors, but it's really important to support the third-party community as well. Because uh, there's a reason, because before joining Google seven years ago, I was one of the, uh, the uh, founder of the Google's cloud community. That was an uh, app engine giant. So bef uh, it was about seven or nine years when I have started the, the, the largest app engine community in Japan uh, with the uh, usually 150 uh, attendees at every meetups. And at that time, as an organizer, I have been struggling with the many usual problems for the, the community organizers, such as finding a venue that can hold the over 100 people, or uh, handling the catering, like a pizza or beers, or handling the, all the, uh, how can I say that, the billing or the accounting, or the handling, uh, doing the MC by yourself. I have been doing everything by, us, by myself. And it has been really hard for me. So after joining Google as, as the, the member of the developer edition teams, I really wanted to solve that, mitigate that challenges for the developer, uh, the organizers. So I was able to get some uh, the budget from the global team so that I was able to support the third party communities such as the TensorFlow user group or GCP uh, user group in Japan. They are all third-party communities and uh, Google doesn't have any control on that, but we have been supporting that. So usually the, if, when TFUG has a meetup in Tokyo, they have been using the Google uh, Tokyo office. But, and also we provided support for the operations and catering, especially if you're using a Roppong, uh, Roppongi Hills office, it's really hard to have the uh, registration desk uh, with some staffs. And those staffs don't have any opportunity to uh, the, watching the, the actual the session. That's the very the sad things. So we have been supporting that. And they have robots. Why Papa Fish? Uh, because TFUG, they call it a Kifugu. Kifugu, Kifugu. And Fug means a Papa Fish in Japanese. So they use the Papa Fish logo. And uh, difficulty of design or academic people, business. Yeah, there are, there are so many different segments of the community. 
Initially, the TensorFlow or Deep Learning community has started with the uh, academic people because you, if you want to use the deep learning, you have to read all the papers written with the, those mathematical formulas, things like that. So academic people started the community for the most of the cases. But gradually, especially in case of the TensorFlow, it, it has grown the uh, uh, enterprise or business users as well. So Shimoda-san decided to have the two different types of the meters. One is the people with the academic interest or the, the state-of-the-art technology. Another meetup is for the uh, business use cases, uh, for the business people who don't have any expertise or the knowledge about the machine learning. So for the, I remember it was for the, uh, the, uh, for the even numbered meetups that was for the academic people and odd numbers uh, meetups it was uh, for the business people. And also we also have to care about the wannabes or machine learning beginners. Usually if you have a public machine learning uh, meetups, usually you would have 80% of the attendees who don't have any expertise on machine learning. They want to learn something about machine learning, but don't have any, any expertise. That's the, uh, one of the very important uh, purpose of having meetups. So we wanted to support those people as well. And embedded engineers and hardware engineers. Actually, I have been hosting a, a branch of the TFUG called uh, TFUG Hardware. It's a, for the hardware uh, topics. So I have been hosting uh, some of these those hardware topic TFUG with those embedded system designers and uh, ASIC or LSI designers who are focusing on how to implement the, the uh, deep learning inference and the uh, trainings on the hardware, not only the software. Introduction on subcommittees. So yeah, we had, uh, yeah, I just talked about the hardware. Yeah, this is the uh, subcommittee I have been operating. And also we had a small meetups with the uh, uh, those academic researchers who like to read the, all the, uh, the top latest papers, neural network papers, uh, and at the same time drinking the uh, alcohols and uh, speaking casually and doing lots of the uh, Q&As. And we have many regional TFUs as well. Okay, so I don't know, it's uh, just a statistics. So that's the uh, overview of the TFUs and how we have grown the uh, user groups from scratch. And as a second topic, I'd like to talk about how I supported the BigQuery committee from scratch. Oh, oh this is another. Uh, how many people actually know or heard about BigQuery? No? Ah, maybe 50% maybe of them. Thank you so much. BigQuery is a uh, data warehouse service uh, from Google Cloud. So it's just, it's, mo it's like uh, the AWS Redshift or or the Oracle Exit, that kind of the data warehouse service available on Google Cloud. And uh, BigQuery has been provided since, when was it? Uh, I forgot it, I have to check. I think the first announcement or release was in 2012 or 2013, but at that time, nobody knows about BigQuery at all. So the services like Google, uh, the AWS Redshift, or the, the on-premise devices such as Oracle Exadata or Teradata, NetEaser, that kind of the uh, data warehouse appliances are more popular. S but I myself really impressed with the technology, really into the technology. And actually BigQuery and its underlying technology was the, one of the most uh, surprising technology uh, or outstanding technologies I found after joining the Google, that was very, that, that uses a very amazing technology inside it. So I was, has been thinking uh, as the, uh, the developer advocate, how we can grow the community from scratch, even though at that time there's no people who use it there. But it was, I think it was about 2014s, 2013s, when I was trying to promote the product, I repeatedly hearing from the, uh, the customers, BigQuery users or developers, how do I import it? How, how, how can I import my data to BigQuery? That was the 
most challenging part for the BigQuery. Because the, most of the big data users who, who requires data warehousing, they has the data in other clouds such as the AWS S3 or the on-premise devices or some other storage devices. How they can import the data, such as hundreds of gigabytes of data or maybe tens of terabytes of data into BigQuery. That was the largest challenge for the developers to get started with BigQuery. So I thought the key to solve this problem was to use the FluentD. As many of them might know, FluentD is the, uh, the de facto standard for collecting log, uh, logs, especially for the AWS users in Japan. And actually, Google Cloud Logging, the logging service from the GCP, and Kubernetes uses the FluentD as a default log collector. And at that time, there was some other the competitors for the FluentD, like a Logstash and some other enterprise-based logging, log aggregation tools. But I thought the FluentD is, is the most important the product to support, supported by BigQuery, because it has the very large active community in Japan. So in 2014, I have been focusing on uh, realizing the integration between the FluentD and BigQuery for real-time log analysis. That's what I have done in 2014. And at that time, there is no way to connect two products together. So I asked Tagomori-san, at that time he was working for the Line Corporation and now he's working for TD, Treasure Data. I gave some uh, GCP coupon to him and asked him to build a plugin for BigQuery. And he did it in Christmas time, I think it was the end of the year, 2014, uh, 2013. And in January 2014, he released the first version of the Fluent plugin for BigQuery. And at that time, the direct reason why I wanted that was to support the TB Asahi project. And in TB Asahi, there was a person called Atsushi Nakamura-san. He is a very active Google developer expert for long years. And he really wanted to use the BigQuery for his the TB Asahi project for music station, where he, they have the uh, AKB48 and ha had the uh, live the voting for the, uh, the songs the audience want to AKB48 to sing in the uh, live uh, the program. And they have used BigQuery for real-time voting, combined with the FluentD plugin, the Tagomori, Tagomori sub made. So that was the first action I, uh, I supported. So the TB Asahi was able to use the BigQuery and FluentD for the, GIS, the production use cases. And actually, they got a very high uh, page views and uh, action, uh, the votings on the, uh, pro the BigQuery. And the, actually, they have used the real live numbers uh, counted by the BigQuery. And also, that was the first time the Fluent, Fluent D pro, uh, BigQuery plugin was used in the uh, enterprise uh, production use cases. And I also started writing the many big BigQuery blog posts on the Keter. My first blog post uh, got the 41K page views. And also, I built some uh, Raspberry Pi demonstration that can directly, that uses the FluentD plugin to directly send the uh, data into the BigQuery. So you don't have to have any uh, uh, front end for the IoT devices, such as the uh, web front ends or IoT front ends or the uh, PubSub things. You can use the BigQuery as the front end because it has the uh, very scalable front end itself. So anybody can build the world's largest IoT uh, front end and back end uh, by spending some time in weekend by using the uh, Fluentd Fluent plugin. And also, th this is another very important activity I did. This, uh, that was the uh, drinking party <laughs> with the people. Actually, this was a, a meetup for the BigQuery book reading meetup. So at that time, uh, Jordan Chigani, Jordan Chigani is the one of the uh, founder of BigQuery team in Google. He was actually writing a major part of the BigQuery itself. And he wrote a book uh, about its inside technology 
architecture and how to use the APIs. And that was translated into Japanese by Tamagawa-san. So uh, I organized some uh, book reading meetups with, uh, as a private meetup. It's, this is not a public meetup with the tens of people. This is a private meetup with just uh, 10 people, including uh, Naoya Ito-san, or Takomori-san, or Tamagawa-san, or uh, Nakamura-san in the uh, Seven, and, uh, Seven and I Corporation. Those core people who are really interested in using the BigQuery in production, and who really wanted to learn about the BigQuery and its underlying technology. And then those influencers or core people started to writing about BigQuery in their blogs. Especially the most imp the biggest impact was coming from the uh, Ito Naoya-san, Naoya Ito-san, Ito's uh, the blog post about BigQuery. And that was the first impact we got in the community. Uh, that was able to gain the uh, very high the attraction from the developer community. And then those other uh, the influencers, such as Hakobera-san, who is now in the Apple, or Tagomori-san, or any other people started writing about BigQuery with their personal blog post. And also, I have, uh, at that time, I was not in develop. Yeah, at that time, I was working as a solutions architect for Google, Google Cloud. I was the only one solutions architect in the entire APAC region. And I have been writing the actual solution paper uh, for BigQuery. And I have written a paper for the uh, featuring the Fluent plugin, uh, BigQuery plugin for Fluent to build the, uh, uh, the real time log aggregation solution. And also, at that time, we have started the BQ Sushi meetup with Nakamura san from the uh, Seven and I Holdings. And the first speaker, we have invited Jordan Tigani uh, from the, the Google. So we were, we, we were able to get over 400 registration. And we had it in Yahoo Japan office, I think. So that was how I supported the community to grow for the, as the uh, BigQuery community in Japan. The first things I so successful was to solve the problem for the community. Uh, customers. It was the uh, Fluentd integration with BigQuery. At that time, Fluentd Fluent is the uh, standard log collector for the developers. And I really wanted to connect that with BigQuery. And I was able to use that in the production projects. And this is the same things we we done with the TFUG TensorFlow user group, which is the uh, having a small private meetup with the really core developers or influencers such as the Naoya-san. And also we supported to publish more and more third-party blogs, not the official corporate blogs. Third-party blog is more important for me, for us. And also the books written in Japanese. And as I mentioned, I have been supporting those growing community by supporting the operation and logistics and catering, everything, by securing some budget from the global team. So that was, that was this. And uh, lastly, I'd like to mention that we are hiring, we have headcount for the developer relations team. But that, this is not about the developer advocates. This is more about the partner engineering, uh, partner, uh, uh, the engineer who are working with the largest partner for, uh, for Google and working with them as a part of the developer relations. So that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>